Hello everyone, my name is Quadly and welcome to a video about Warframe pigments, colors you have to farm up to decorate your dojo. First we will go over why you need the pigments and how to use them in the dojo, and then we will go over how to farm every single one of them, so let's just go. The pigment station is located in the dojo, more specifically in Tenno Lab. All of the colors require 10,000 credits plus X amount of pigments, which are only dropped from specific enemies. There is two phases of getting color for every pigment. The first one is collecting your resources and the second one is researching the color. You may collect and research one pigment at a time. When you want to unlock one of the colors, you have to start the collecting of the resources for that color first. Then the enemies will start dropping the pigments. You may also pause the collection of the resource for one color and start researching another one, but be sure to contribute all of the pigment you wish to pause. If you don't, it will just get deleted. I think it is very important to point out that you may only collect and research one pigment at a time again. Contributing all the required resources will start a 36 hour countdown. You now have to wait until it is done and then you can choose another pigment to farm after the 36 hours. When the color is researched, you can now customize your dojo by clicking the escape button, going under decorations and then polychrome room. You can now place down a polychrome. You may place the polychrome down anywhere in the room, it will disappear later, but be sure to know that it will only paint the room that it is in. Okay, let's look at the polychrome now. There's a few options. First two ones at the bottom are change room colors and change lighting colors. These ones contain the colors you researched. You may also preview the colors to see the room for some time and walk around, and at the end, if you are happy with what you see, go back to polychrome and fun construction. For real, the resources you need for this are not that hard to get, so you can do a whole dojo at a time. After 24 hours, the colors of the dojo will be changed to the ones you set in the polychrome. But that is it for the colors, now I'll just give you a few tips that may help you with farming pigments. Looting Warframes such as Necra, Sevara, Korra and so on will get you a lot more pigments. Resource boosters of both kinds, the drop chance and double resource boosters do work so be sure to use them. But yeah, that is pretty much everything you need to know for boosting your farming of pigments. Before we start with the pigments, I will also quickly tell you about what will be shown after I talk about a specific pigment. This is one of the pigment cards with the name of the pigment, the picture of the pigment and the color of the pigment on the top, then the enemy from which you can get the pigment, under that there is the location where the enemy spawns, below the location there is the amount you need in total on the left and on the right there is the amount of pigment an enemy will drop if it drops it. There is also the drop chance and my favorite spot below it. Besides that, I will also add something called a rageometer with 5 categories. The farming green category is just extremely easy to farm pigments, like going to one mission and you're done. The yellow I'm going in category includes enemies for which you will only need time to farm up, so it might get a little bit boring, but it is not that bad. Orange wheel of steel category for which you need quite a lot of uh, know-how and time to actually farm up efficiently is quite hard, so yeah, this is the point of no return pretty much. The red Hey Cruel World category is, yeah, it's not just painfully boring and long, but it is also pointless since you can farm anything else besides it, the pigment, or, well, it is just not worth it to get the other rewards, so yeah, it is just terrible. And the last category, purple, make me understand, which is beyond the scale and will lead to eventual burnout or forced inclusion into a mental asylum. So yeah, you were warned. Also very important to know is that the amount of pigment you actually need is depending on your clan rank. Ghost clans just need the normal amount of pigment, the shadow clans need 3 times the normal amount, the Storm Clans need 10 times the normal amount, the Mountain Clans 30 times, and the Moon Clans 100 times. So yeah, more people, that is true, but you will just need to farm more. First we will go over the enemies you can find in the Orb Valleys. This way you will get many Toroids, resources you will need a lot of. The farming will work the same way every single time, by going to a specific location on the map, those being the Enrichment Labs, Temple of Prophet or a spaceport and leaving an enemy to place down an alert beacon. 
the enemies you can get pigments from will start spawning at alert level 3. Again though, I will add that there is a lot of ways to get toroids, this one is probably one of the best ones, you're farming pigments and toroids at the same time. It is just great. But now let's go to the pigments. 01000011 Cyan Pigment comes from Terra Raptor SX and its elite version. Normally they just spawn anywhere at the Temple of Profit, Enrichment Labs or Spaceport. They're also quite huge so you will definitely see them. Memorium Purple is dropped by Terra Provisors and their Elite versions. I hope I said this right. The best place to find them is the Temple Fabrication, but you can also find some outside of Spaceport. Conductor Gold Pigment comes from Terra Embator Moas and their Elite versions as well. They are found anywhere from Spaceport, Enrichment Labs and Temple of Profit. You can also find them by playing the bounties, but they are not as common there. You can get Coolant Blue by killing Terra Overtakers and their Elite versions. These enemies are extremely common, so getting this pigment shouldn't be that hard. Neo Pink is dropped from Terra Trenchers. Insanely hard enemies to kill just because they will stagger you all the freaking time. They will jump around and kill you, maybe? I don't know, we'll see. That is it about the pigments you can find in the Orbalus, we will now go over the ones which you can find on the plains of Eidolon. There is four of them. Devar Grey is dropped from Tusk Mortar Bombards. There is not many of them out there on the plains, so yeah, best bet is to do high level bounties tier 4 or 5 and try to get rewards as primary objective like Eidolon lenses and stuff like that. Mortis Pink is a very easy pigment to get, it drops from Tusk Flame Blades. I suggest you go into any bounty that is tier 3 or above, for real, it will take you a very short time unless you have Forsaken Iron Jesus. Shard Black is quite a grindy pigment, only dropped from Vomvalis, spawning in at night time on the plains. There is two ways to farm it, one is flying around on the archwing looking for Voms and killing them this way. I myself however would rather suggest you to do the Eidolon or even Tridolon hunts if you can, the reward output is just much better. And now the last pigment on the plains, Wisp Grey, this one is very painful to farm. They drop from Darigan Pilots. The only reliable way to farm this pigment is to fly around during the daytime and look for Darigan Pilots on the ground which spawn from time to time. You may do this the whole day cycle but yeah, farming is pathetically boring so I suggest you to bring a looting frame. That is it about the pigments of Plains of Eidolon, so let's now continue to the non-boss based pigments on the star chart. Most of these will require you to do longer survival missions or multiple of them to acquire all the pigment for the research, but yeah, let's go. Charger Blue is a pigment which you can get from Toxic Ancients, the easiest way to get it is to just do a long infested survival or any other endless infested mission. 
They will not spawn right at the beginning, but will start spawning after the wave 5 or 5th minute of survival. Crawler Blue is a terrible pigment to farm, it only drops from infested crawlers which you can most commonly find in endless missions such as survivals or defenses. Mutalist Red is dropped from Tar Mutalist Moas, the ones that spit out all the orange goo. They can be found at any infested mission, so you can do any of them, preferably endless ones. Most of the time, Mutalist Moas will spawn after the 5th minute mark or 5th wave, so yeah, not right away. Nanite Blue has a low chance to drop from Chargers, which are the most common enemy in any infested mission. This pigment really shouldn't be a problem, just do an endless infested mission and you should have more than enough. The next set of enemies is either Void or Void Fissured exclusive, but yeah, I think the best location is still getting them in the Void. Autumn Brown is only dropped from the Corrupted Moas anywhere in the Void. I suggest you to do a long survival mission for this one. The pigment is not that rare, but also not the most common. At the end, you will get a lot of Argon Crystals, so be sure to do this only if you are in need of them. Dust Brown is dropped by corrupted lancers found in the void. Just do a long survival mission or pretty much any mission about relics and void fissures and stuff like that and you will get a lot of this pigment. For real, they are one of the most common corrupted enemies. Leech Green is dropped from Corrupted Crewmen in the Void, a long survival or two will get you most of the pigment you need, so yeah, you can also get this pigment through the Void Fissures, just in lesser amounts, but yeah, they are extremely common, so this shouldn't be a problem. Moa Green is dropped from Orokin Drones. They are only found in the Void and are floating around enemies giving them shields. For real, a long survival will be good enough because they are extremely common. The next set of pigments is based around Corpus enemies. First one is Glacial Blue, which you can get from Crewmen. They are extremely common enemies on Venus, but you can only find them on the ground nodes, and not in the spaceship nodes. If you want to get all the pigment in one go, I suggest you to do Kilken Excavation. You do need to watch out, because the Crewmen, the normal ones, will be at some point replaced by Elite Crewmen, so as soon as you see a large amount of Elite Crewmen, just go. Railgun Blue is dropped from Railgun Moas, which are not that rare. They can be found at snowy and icy corpus style sets like Europa, Neptune or Pluto, and also on Lua Node Apollo, my favorite. Jackal Yellow is quite a painful pigment to get, it comes from Sniper Crewman, the yellow colored corpus, they can be found at any snowy or icy corpus tile set around the star chart with the best places being 4 planets, Europa, Neptune, Pluto and Lua. If you don't feel like doing an endless mission or something like that and also need detonite injectors, I suggest you to side with Grenier in their invasions. The sniper crewmen will actually start spawning right away there, so it is extremely easy to farm them.
Morning Yellow is dropped from Leech Ospreys, extremely tough enemies to farm, not because they are strong, but because they are so rare. They can be found on Corpus Icy or Snowy Tile sets and Lua, I myself would suggest doing any endless mission on Europa, Neptune, Pluto or Lua, this one will be tough to get. The next set of enemies we get the pigments from are the Grenier. Easy to farm, really. Hesperia Brown is dropped by troopers, the yellow Grenier with shotguns. I'd suggest doing a long survival on any Grenier based planet such as Ceres, Saturn or Sedna. You can do any other Grenier based endless mission as well. These guys are everywhere. Oak Brown can be obtained by killing the Butchers, just playing any Grenier based mission will do. I suggest doing a longer survival on Mercury, Ceres, Sedna or Saturn. But for real they are everywhere as well, so yeah. The Olympus Blue is a pigment only dropped from Grenier Lancers. Even though you might think they are extremely common, they are not. You need to play low-level Grenier missions on Mercury, Earth or Ceres. You'll find far less of them elsewhere. I myself suggest you to play survivals or even exterminates, but yeah, you can also play other endless missions such as defenses or interceptions, but watch out because the elite lancers will soon replace the normal lancers. So yeah, as soon as you see a lot of elite lancers, just stop farming them. Just go. River Blue is dropped by Seekers, which you can find most commonly on Grenier Galleons or Asteroid bases. Saturn or Sedna are a goldmine for them, almost every node actually. So yeah, do a long survival and you should get a lot of them. They will start spawning after 5 to 10 minutes and look like this, green, they are perfect. Sand Yellow will be one of the easiest pigments to get, really. It is dropped by Scorpions, which are very common on Grenier Galleons and Asteroid bases, especially on Saturn and Sedna. I suggest doing a long survival, they will just spawn quite consistently, so this shouldn't be hard. Tharsis Brown is dropped from Ballistas, Grenier enemies found at Grenier asteroid bases and galleons, they're not that rare as well, so doing a bit longer survival should be a-okay. Sirtis Orange is dropped from very rare enemies found at Mars City Tile set called the Arid Eviscerator. I myself would suggest you to do any endless mission on Mars like Augustus Excavation or Alator Interception. I can't believe I actually read Eviscator or something like that and not Eviscerator all this time in Warframe. I'm freaking dyslexic or something, I don't know. Tree Green is a pigment only dropped from Arid Lancers, enemies all over Mars on the Mars City tile set. I myself would suggest doing Augustus Excavation or Alator Interception, but only to the point where the elite versions of the Lancers spawn. When they start spawning, there will soon be no more normal Arid Lancers, so you should just stop. And now the last Grenier based pigment, Tower White, can be dropped from Kuva Jesters. Very, very rare enemies, only found at Kuva Fortress and Kuva Siphon missions. 
I myself suggest you to do any endless mission you like at Kuva Fortress, for real, the best one is probably survival, so you will get lots of Kuva as well. By this point we are done with all the enemies you can find all over the star chart, so we must go to the assassination target based pigments. First one is Elysium Blue. It is one of the easiest pigments to farm, but it will take you some time. You can only get this pigment from the Sergeant, which you can find at Phobos Assassination, node Iliad. For real, it is easy, just a little bit time consuming. Night Blue is dropped from Vehek, found on Earth, node Aura. It is only an assassination mission, so it shouldn't be that hard. I suggest you to try farming Hydroid while killing this guy, the mission is quite long, so yeah, it will take you quite some time. Also, stop stealing his air. Stop. Boiler Red is an invasion based pigment, you can only get it by killing Forid, which is always present on assassination nodes taken over by infested outbreaks. For real, you can farm this one up in half an hour or even less if quick, so yeah, it shouldn't be that hard. Leaf Red is a pigment that only depends on RNG, you can get it from Stalker or Shadow Stalker. He might come for you if you are marked by him, which you definitely are. You can see that at your profile, for real, I did make a video about him already, the Stalker and Shadow Stalker, so if you want to get some more details on that, you should look at it, it is in the upper right corner right now. And the last pigment, Anti-Violet, one of the most painful pigments to farm. They only drop from Zanuka Hunter, which you can encounter only in two ways. First way is by getting marked by it, for that you will need to play 5 invasion missions and support Grunir against the Corpus. It won't count if you go against the Infested. You can see if you are marked by looking at your profile, the mark looks like this. You will also get a beautiful threatening message from Alad V. The second way of getting Zanuka Hunter to spawn is to get Zanuka Hunter beacons from Barrow Kitir or Nightwave cred offerings. This is extremely expensive though. Zanuka Hunter may spawn in any Corpus mission after you get marked, similar to Stalker. By killing it, you will besides the pigment also get Detron parts, a very fun weapon to play with when crafted. Farming this pigment will for real get you a lot of Detonite injectors since you need to support the Grunir all the time, believe me. It will take you months to farm this up, if not lucky, or if lucky, I don't know what to say. But for real, that is it. For the end, this was the last pigment. I put a lot of work in this video, but... I know I must have gotten something wrong or missed a better place to get some pigments, so I'm open for suggestions and complaints, but for real, narrating this video made me so effing tired, I'll just go to sleep and it's 9 fucking am. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye guys!